Okay, so now I want to introduce you to this grouping of functions called table functions, okay? Now we've touched on a few before. These include um, functions like filter. Filter is classified as a table function. Um, also there's all which we've, we've, um, we've mentioned earlier in the course. There's also other functions like values. Um, there's one called top end. There's one called add columns. There's a whole range of them. Um, we're not going to cover all of them. Uh, but uh, what I would recommend if you want to get a, an idea of a much broader range of these is, is check out the DAX formula reference guide which is in the resource pack for this course. Also check out our knowledge base where we have our DAX guide um, which covers every single DAX function so you can have a look at it there. Or you can jump on our, um, our chatbot Edna who you can ask questions to and um, she'll direct you um, to the right um, location for a particular function as well okay but what i do want to show you here around table functions is how they work okay because what you'll find here you'll see here with this example that we went through earlier it's hard it's very difficult and if i was to um, follow my own my own philosophy around um, <laughs> formatting this is how i would probably make it look by the way um, is it's hard to actually imagine what this is doing in behind the scenes because you can't actually, because when we call this filter, which is a table function, we can't actually see what table it is creating in the background. There's no way for us to see it in this um, front end here, okay? But what we can do is we can do it using this feature um, called a, a new, we, by creating a new table. So if I just find it here, you see here, if you go to the modeling ribbon, you can actually add a new table. And so what you can do is you can add a new table just with formula, okay? So if you add a new table, you'll see here it comes up under here, and what we can do is we can name it, and we can go filter example like this. And I mean, first of all, what you can do is you can actually just enter a, a full table. Say you want to duplicate a table, you can literally just enter that table name, and it will duplicate the entire table for you okay but you can also you can also use table functions okay so what we're going to do is we'll use filter and within filter it first asks you for a table and so i'm going to put sales um, and within that table i can then put after that table i can put a filter expression and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say well if the quantity if the the quantity column is greater than two then i want only want to see that sale okay so you see now that we have a so the original sales table was about fifteen thousand rows this one is only four thousand seven hundred and that's because we have filtered it down to only look at those with a quantity of greater than two okay and so this is how this is how we can literally visualize what is going on within our measures when we're using these functions okay and you know we could also we could also do something like this. We could go go um, products. We could also see how did how did um, we could also go filter products. Um, and maybe maybe you know maybe we want to just as an example. What what are we doing when we when we filter that product name, right? Product name um, is equal to product one hundred. If I can type this out, product one hundred. Okay, so this is basically and we're going we're to return a table of one product really um, so it's just going to basically return a one row table because we're filtering it for product and so this is this is what is happening in behind here when this formula is running right for every single um, this context is applied first the evaluation context then this table function is then um, filtering and providing additional context, same thing, they mean the same same sort of thing, um, by only reducing that product table down to product 100. And then what's happening in behind the scenes is product 100 is being filtered here, which flows down this relationship automatically. And so now we're only looking at a sales table of just product 100, and then that's how we get the sales of just those products. Okay, so that's how that's how it works. Okay, so we can test other things in here. So I want to show you, introduce you to another function called values, okay? And what values does is it returns you a one column table of just 
unique values. Okay, so it actually says here, when a column name is given, it returns a single column table of unique values. Okay, so say for instance, we have, like if you think about our date table, right? We have many dates, okay? Well, say we wanted to get a table of what, like a table of just one of our, um, like our months, right? So I could type in month, I could go and find month name. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a table of just each individual month. And that's it, right? Okay, and what we can do is we can actually place this inside of um, measures. But again, it's hard to recognize what's actually happening within um, the measure because we can't actually physically see this table. So that's why this is a really good testing place to you know, have a look at, um, to evaluate how these, how these are actually working, okay? And so this is this is just me showing you how it works in in um, you know all of virtually within measures, okay? So you don't have to do this yourself, other than if you're trying to understand it, okay? So let's just let's just exit out of that, and we'll come back here, okay? So we've gone through some filter examples, so I won't cover those again, but you kind of know um, how how it works now. But what I want to show you is that values function. Like, how, how would you use that within here, okay? So here's here's an example for you. What if we wanted to work out a calculation that um, was, okay, so this customer, for example, purchased, so we'll change it back to sales actually. Okay, so this person purchased um, this amount of sales, okay? Right, well, I'll just extend the date time frame. This person and this, per so this is just total sales for each individual person. What if we wanted to work out what the average monthly sales were what what is the average monthly sales for this customer in this particular time frame on average how much do they spend per month okay so this isn't immediately obvious like how you would do this without knowing how to combine a few of these things that we've touched on before okay so let's do it so i'm going to create a new measure and i'm going to go i'm going to call it average monthly sales okay I'm gonna go down to a new line by holding shift and enter now whenever you think of average right what sort of function would you think we would use we'd use obviously the average function but the thing is is that we actually need to use average X here because we're trying to evaluate what the average is at a monthly level okay so we need to use an iterating function to do that and now within an iterating function, remember, because we've touched on some X in a bit, a bit of detail um, earlier, we can put a table and we can put an expression. Now, whenever you see table, you are not just restricted to putting a physical table. What you can actually do is you can put a table function, just like we did like a moment ago. And I'm going to say in, uh, inside of here, I'm going to go values and I'm going to go month and year. Okay, in this case, it's month and calendar. Probably want to change that name, not the greatest name, but month and month and year. This is basically what this particular column is. Okay, so think about what an iterating function does it iterates through a table. We are going to iterate through this table and think about what this table is. It's going to be a table of unique values of month and year, just like we saw before. Okay, but this is month and year, not just month name, because if you did month name, it wouldn't work across different years that we have in our slicer here. Okay, and so I'm going to evaluate through every single month and, cal in, and year, and I'm going to do um, work out what my sale, you know, I'm going to do it by sales. Okay, so just to um, avoid any confusion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my date table. And I'm going to turn this into month and year, okay? Because this is the column we used. I'm also going to make sure this particular column is sorted correctly by this column. We have month in year here, because that's the sorting column. And so I'm going to go month in year, okay? And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab my um, average monthly sales in here. And then I could also format it. Okay, so and let's just make sure this is two. Or oh, we'll put it as zero actually. And 
and we don't want those pounds. Just let me fix this up, just give me a second. Power BI is playing tricks on me. Okay, that we have to do. It's just playing a few tricks on me there, but it's calculating average monthly sales. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Let's just quickly review what we did earlier. So what values is doing. Um, yeah, so this is this is the values example. Values example, let's just click on that. So what values has done is it has returned a column of unique values. So I, and the, the way I've used it inside of here is I've said, okay, I've got the current context of a customer. So this particular result here, and behind the scenes, I've created a one column table of unique values of the month and year. I'm then iterating through every single month and year, working out the total sales that every, that the customer has made in each of those months and years. I'm saving those sales into memory for each month. And then at the end, I'm averaging what um, those remain, all, all of those calculated results. I'm averaging them all out. And then that's how I'm getting my average monthly sales for this particular customer. Okay, so this is really, really, really versatile. So you could say, okay, well, what was the, instead of month and year, I could put, I could actually put year if I really wanted to and see what the average sales per year was because you see here that we actually go over a couple of years in our, in our um, date slicer. You could even do it by day if you really wanted to. And you're not restricted to just doing this by, um, you know, by, uh, by dates as well you could say okay what was the average sales by product okay by unique product name so I could also go product name inside of here okay and so this is this is how you can find lots of unique calculations really really quickly when you start combining these things okay and I want to show you one more function called all which we we have touched on really briefly earlier, but it's it's another name for it is the remove filter function, and so it sort of um, acts in an opposite way to values in a lot of ways. So um, I'm going to go a new co new measure here. I'm going to go um, all sales. I'm going to go all sales, all all customer sales. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to go calculate total sales. Right, then I'm going to go all, and then I'm going to go customers. Okay, I'm going to. You can actually add a table or a col column. I'm going to just add a table here. Okay, and then I'm going to push enter, and then I'm going to drag that into my table here, and check this out. So what it has done here is, it has. So you see this result down here, this total. So basically, what it's done, what all has done, is it said. Um, it has said remove any filters in the current context of customers and because in the current context I have a customer name um, which is allowing me to calculate my total sales what it's doing here is it's saying we'll calculate up total sales but disregard remove any filters from customers so because it's removing all the filters from customers down here it's basically returning the total for every single result okay so I'll leave it with you there around just some of these key table functions, okay? And having a good understanding of how these operate is is crucial because you can you can actually combine can combine a lot of them in the same formula, and that's when you know formula combinations really start coming into it, um, and that's where you know things can get um, really really interesting. Okay, let's finish off this section and we'll move on to the next one.